Um, again, uh, I'm Siamak Tavalai. I'm very active within OCP, but uh, I'm also the president of CXL Consortium. So it, it, it um, helps me uh, understand what technologies are and find home for them within the OCP community. And we all need uh, your help. Um, and here with me, Jeff. Hi, I'm Jeff Dotson, Broadcom. Uh, switch hardware architect, history in PCI Express switches, and now going into CXL, um, kind of riding the wave of the endless wave. So. <laughs> Very good. So uh, t today um, we're building uh, small steps towards a large capability of what CXL is providing through small devices, so larger devices, and through software eventually. And management and security is important. This particular session, uh, we're going to explore what it takes to build larger system using switches in a form of CXL fabric. But as usual, we should also worry about or concern uh, about security, management, uh, robustness, and reliability of the systems. Uh, take that one. You want me to do this? Okay. Sure. Sure. Um, so CXL is an industry standard. That's a big deal. Uh, so like I said, I came from PCI Express, and we try to do proprietary methods to do a lot of things that CXL's uh, addressing, multi-host, uh, non-tree topologies. So CXL is going to be an industry standard. It allows everyone to interoperate and cooperate and develop software infrastructure. Uh, so that's, that's a big deal to, uh, to me. Um, it's built on PCI Express semantics. I think CMAC mentioned earlier all the PCI Express electricals, including Gen 6, PAM 4, um, is just leveraged into CXL. It's building on that. So it's the same investment there, getting returns. Um, so everything with PCI Express, and we'll show in the next couple slides, how a CXL topology with a switch looks from a PCI Express point of view and then how, how you can enable it on top of that. Uh, so we'll start out with PCI Express. We'll have some pictures with that. And um, I can get into as many details as you want. Um, I, don't, I thought there would be more questions interactive. But so I'll, I'll just try and highlight a little bit when I show the topologies, how PCI Express TLPs go through. Uh, so there's some different uh, nomenclature. PCI Express uses TLPs. And the CXL cache mem uses messages. And PCI Express added something new working with CXL. A consortium saying, how can we do uh, something that allows peer-to-peer non-tree topology support, and that's UIO, unordered I.O. So that's a PCI Express new addition to the Gen 6 uh, that, that CXL use cases take advantage of. Uh, th th this is a very good point. Um, uh, we have experts here on the, on the stage. Uh, everybody is expert in its, uh, his or her, her, her area. Uh, the, Frank has done a good job of uh, allocating enough time for us to come up with a teaser. Uh, the conversation we have today is just introducing the topics to you. It is uh, for you to, the specification is out there, go, uh, go access the specification. And um, uh, CXA Consortium has webinars and uh, December time frame or so, we are, we are we're targeting having a training session somewhere close in the Bay Area. Uh, so get involved and uh, bring your uh, uh, friends and colleagues and we will, we will join and have fun. So uh, again, part of the conversation today is uh, building towards larger systems. Um, latency a little bit longer, but that's okay. They will provide uh, capabilities anyway. So we do have challenges. Uh, uh, it's, it's not easy to build large systems. Jeff? Sure. So the challenge is in a large system is, is there's a discovery challenge. And we'll show in the topology there's a what's the host find, what's your typical software find. And that one, we're uh, CXL and PCI Express, we're, we're keeping it uh, no changes. So the same sing single topology works, but then CXL has an extra layer on top of it. We call it a fabric manager. It's what enables multi-host to all play in the sandbox with switches. Uh, so, so we'll go over that. Right. So, so basically, first, do no harm. Uh, applications running today on PCIe should have fun. Uh, they can <laughs> uh, still discover devices in a normal way. And um, if uh, they want to use memory and there is a CXL uh, uh, memory expander plugged in through the software layers that are familiar with applications, just receive more memory and it works. So doing a hello world should be simple. Now, of course, you can do more. And for that, uh, to the extent the value is provided through CXL, uh, developers will develop uh, new, new capabilities. So, CXL provides uh, 
again, a number of uh, capabilities that we could choose to take advantage or not. Uh, you can see that we, we just talked about it. Devices can be connected directly to a CPU. So that's a point-to-point -point connection. Uh, memory expander is a good example, or an accelerator is a good example to, to be directly connected to the CPU. The fact that the CPU is managing coherence for a memory device, so the memory device itself need not worry about it, is a good uh, crawl, walk, run uh, concept. Uh, but CXL also provides multi-headed capabilities and switch capabilities. Therefore, we can create different topologies. Some of these diagrams over here are suggesting uh, all to all point-to-point um, -point, uh, connection using multi-headed devices, multi-port devices, or through a switch fabric similar to PCIe, we can go to larger and larger capabilities. Uh, using um, uh, copper li links, you have certain length, but it's very likely people would like to extend the reach from one chassis to another chassis, from one rack to another rack. It is very likely one of you guys is going to come up with great ideas to stretch the link using perhaps retimers or optical links to extend the reach. Uh, uh, different kinds of compute elements can be created as part of the CXL devices. CXL devices need not be only memory. They can act on memory. So any kind of XPUs, uh, DPUs, IPUs, TPUs uh, can be uh, created also. So with switches? Okay, so, so if you want to use a switch, and our, pr our prior speaker Ahmed was saying in scale out, you can direct connect memory, but if you, if you look at some of the pictures, you get more and more connectivity issues. So switch simplifies some of that, but it has a cost of latency. Um, with CXL 3.0, you can have multiple switches, so you can get very complex topologies. And I'm showing a couple topologies, and I'll give you a perspective of what's the, uh, what do you build as the physical topology. Uh, that's what's there. And you'll see there's a purple cloud in the middle. Those are switches to give even more connectivity, more options, obviously, at more switch latency. Um, but the difference, and I want to uh, separate it, is what's the logical view from a host. So on the right side, you'll see two different hosts. On that same physical topology, what do they see? And what they see, if you're familiar with PCI Express, is they see a PCI Express tree. So it's a standard tree, standard PCI Express enumeration, standard discovery, standard loading drivers. Uh, what CXL then gives is that those devices on the end and the switches will have a CXL capability. So that says, oh, I can do more. This tree is my foundation. I build on that. I can run everything PCI Express, but I can do more. Um, so one of the key things in CXL is the link will come up. It's PCI Express Electrical, but it comes up as a Flexbus link. It has two protocols running at the same time. Uh, one is PCI Express. They call it CXL.io. And the other flavor on the same link at the same time is, is a CXL cache mem. And so the CXL cache mem allows the memory semantics, allows the coherency on the same wire. Um, so again, the, the topology of PCI Express, it's a simple tree. But then with the CXL, it allows to run on those same links, you can run cache mem traffic. So you can get your memory, it's all cache line based uh, semantics uh, for coherency memory transferring. And a couple key things, in PCI Express topology, uh, my history we came up with, well how do you do multi-host PCI Express, there was not an industry standard for it. CXL provides that standard to say how do I do multi-host, how am I going to uh, work at the system, and how can I do peer-to-peer -peer across a non-tree topology. So, so we're enabling all that in CXL. Right, so a very good point. Um, when use cases emerge, uh, smart people uh, work within their own companies and come up with solutions. Uh, and hey, that's very viable. That's a wonderful thing to do. But what we've been trying to do through a consortium of all good uh, smart people is to do it in a standard way. Uh, Jeff has, uh, has, has built proprietary solutions around switch fabrics before, but now he's part of the CXL consortium has recognized that working together, we can do bigger things. Now, specifically for, uh, for CXL specification, it is by nature, by, by within, uh, within the goals that we've had, is fully backward compatible. Um, you don't really have to wait for CXL 3.0, uh, complete set of solutions for a particular device to implement. You can pick and choose uh, one, two, three features from CXL 2.0, one or two features from CXL 3.0. You can still claim that it's 3.0 compliant because uh, 3.0 has a lot of optional features. You can pick and choose. Another very important feature uh, for switches uh, from the beginning, or the goal was uh, we want to have investment protection and we want to enable the ecosystem 
Uh, so if you have already built a PCIe device and your system is uh, CXL capable as CXL switches on it, you can just plug into open slot, open PCIe slot, and it uh, trains, as Jeff just said, as a PCIe device and the software is happy through the tree hierarchy that, that we just talked about. So, uh, but again, you can do more uh, in a standard way and having a fabric built on uh, multiple CXL switches, either in the form of cascaded or in the form of a fabric, uh, graph, graph topologies are possible. And to do that, use case was introduced and then solutions needed to be developed. Uh, the way CXL consortium works is that smart people get together through work groups, come up with proposals, get feedback from each other, make better proposals, and eventually uh, cast it in stone or written paper in the form of a specification. Some of the features over here, Jeff has been very much involved in developing those. Would you please explain? Sure, so the CXL is a, a progression. So I start at 1.1, uh, 2.0 is when they first added a switch. And on this slide, it's the HBR switch, uh, hierarchy based route switch. Uh, certain protocols, that's only gonna work with one switch. It, has, it, you know, it, it gives you the scale of one switch. But then when we looked at more complex topologies, how do you scale them to multiple switches in arbitrary topologies, uh, we wanted to come up with something more. So we, we introduced in 3.0 the PBR ID routing, port-based routing. And so I'll go on the next slide uh, how the IDs are assigned. There's a lot more details to that. But with the ID routing, then it allows switches to do uh, like the topology on the far right, a mesh topology. Uh, we can have the, the devices talk to each other across those mesh links. There's multi-paths. You can take advantage of multi-paths. You can take, take advantage of all kinds of uh, extra features, all optional extra. Um, with the PBR routing. Uh, some of the other nomenclature on here, we talked earlier about memories. There's SLD, single logic device, MLD, and then a, a new t uh, development in 3.0 is the GFD, a global fabric attached memory. Uh, this is a PBR ID memory that multiple hosts can target at the same time. Right, so uh, as you see, these are pretty pictures, nice drawings on, on paper, uh, but we are part of OCP, Open Compute Project, and we are basically the people that realize these wonderful concepts. Uh, technologies come from different consortia, uh, perfected on NVMe or CXL or PCIe or uh, somewhere else, but we as system suppliers uh, get together and build a wonderful system, hardware, software, co-design, and eventually produce products and, and help our customers uh, have fun. Uh, but you look at this diagrams and you see complexities. Uh, yep, um, switches are connected. How are they connected? Uh, are they connected through backplanes? Are they connected through cables? What is the most efficient way of doing it? Uh, if, we, if we are introducing a new component, do we also create a new fault mode? If we do, how do we go and cover and perhaps create a new gap? How do we cover the gap? Those are all the type of things that this community needs to work together and perhaps soon uh, we should work together to come up with reference designs, uh, having a complex system built and have different people in a modular way uh, pick and choose which areas they want to uh, innovate. So this next slide gets into a lot of details. Uh, so we had in the 3.0 release an idea, okay, we want to do port-based routing. We want to do these topologies, but there's another level of detail. So we had to roll up the sleeves. Uh, I think uh, earlier they mentioned that the 3.1 upcoming release We'll get into more of those details. This is where we get more input from multiple different uh, members of the CXL saying, well, this use case is important to me. How do I do it? This is where I want to go in the future. How are we going to plan for that? And so that's what we're going for. This one goes into the details of the PBRID was introduced for, for 3.0, but the details uh, need to be fleshed out. This fleshes out a lot of the details, and I can go in through the details. Um, I'll just mention quickly. Again, it's going to be a PCI Express tree topology. So you look at this, it doesn't look like a tree, but if you look at just say host one, it's all pink, that's a tree. And that, that tree can then connect through this fabric in what the host one enumeration software standard tree. So I'm showing that. Uh, one of the key things is there's IDs on this drawing, and where are the IDs for the PBID routing? The switch host port's going to have ID, the switch downstream ports will have ID, and the downstream port is the far uh, endpoint attached downstream port. And the switches themselves will have ID for management. Um, with that pool of IDs, then you can say, I can route from any host to any endpoint, any endpoint to any endpoint, or even any host to any host. 
And so that, that's a rich set of ID mapping. And then the question is, how do you get those IDs? And so the switch has some tables that can get those IDs um, to, to do those routes. And, and these, these are the uh, essential elements to enable compute disaggregation. Uh, you see on, uh, on, on this uh, chart, on this diagram, you see hosts and remote uh, devices. Remote devices could be memory or accelerators. Uh, out of uh, possibilities, you create and compose uh, computers based on a number of devices that are connected through the fabric. So the notion of fabric allows disaggregation, and the flip side of the same coin is composition. And we do have software uh, composed memory system, for example, as part of uh, C uh, OCP uh, consortium as, as a sub-project. You guys can jump in and help. OK. So and then I was going to do a little bit more on the last slide, but that's all right, okay. we're jumping ahead. So on this last slide, um, one I want to go through is, is some of the ID. One of the interesting innovations is how do you handle the switch to switch connectivity? And there's some detailed numbers in there, but it's really a binding of some IDs that says this one switch downstream port goes to another switch upstream port. And um, that's going to be carried in not only just CXL cache mem for IDs, but also PCI Express. You might say PCI Express doesn't have these IDs, and so CXL, we've invented a, a, a four byte, uh, like a prefix, that will have those IDs and can carry uh, the ID to PCI Express traffic without changing any PCI Express TLP or the cache mem traffic. And so, so this ID uh, works for all the protocols on the Flexbus and allows you know, all the topologies, even for just PCI Express or for, for cache mem. Okay. Okay, so um, again, uh, capabilities are there, but um, customers uh, still expect reliable systems, performance systems, and they don't want to pay too much for it. So we, we always have the same challenges. Uh, make a system uh, capable, but at the same time, uh, make it reliable, fault tolerant, and uh, security is very important these days for confidential compute. Uh, and uh, sustainability uh, is, is a major factor that we all should be thinking about. Uh, what does it take for us to use a smaller uh, amount of material and the energy that goes into building these systems, but still provide the capabilities? That all that can turn into uh, reducing the overhead of building a system, uh, coming up with methodologies to reuse individual modules, uh, reuse in the form of sharing, perhaps, pooling, perhaps, uh, or from generation to generation, you build something for one particular generation of product. If the system is modular, uh, certain portions of that product can live through another generation. Uh, the fact that CXL is there as a standard uh, interface, standard interconnect, allows um, processor and memory and device technologies to be on different time cadence. Uh, technology introduction can be at different times. Therefore, you can start with one system, still backward compatible, build a future system. So uh, as, as I said earlier, please join. Uh, within OCP, we have a lot of work to do. But CXL Consortium is also another forum for you guys to uh, come, uh, come up with your use cases make proposals about how to resolve and uh, resolve the challenges, work with your colleagues, provide feedback, receive feedback, come up with better uh, solution, write it down in a specification, and share it with others. Thanks. Thank you. All right.